Larry Nasser, you sentenced him to up to 175 yes. years. There was, in your opinion, tremendous threat if he didn't go to jail. Did you ever consider that he wouldn't go to jail? I knew that he would go to prison. I didn't know until I sentenced him how much he would do. His plea agreement was 25 to 40 on the minimum. And it's interesting because everyone said that I was so mean and so harsh. But interestingly enough, math doesn't lie, does it? So the federal judge sentenced him to 60 years. He, of course, appealed trying to get 20 years because and stacked them all at the same time, and he lost on that. I sentenced him 40 to 175, but I had seven charges. The Eaton County judge sentenced him 40 to 125 years. She had three charges. Divide three into 40, it's what, about 11 point something years? So divide seven into 40, and it's what, 5.3 years. I actually sentenced him the least. What he didn't like was that when I thought the lethality factors in my courtroom, you know, the sheer anguish was at such a high level, it was red, you know, I would lash out at him and then it would calm it right down to green um, because his behavior was awful. What was he doing that was so awful? The things that I saw were he was just being flippant. Yes, flippant, uh, laughing with his lawyers and not paying attention. If you read the transcript or listen to it, the sister survivors many, many times said, you look at me. I am not a number. I am a name. You look at me. And he wasn't looking. And for those people who think I was harsh, he was in the witness chair rather than at council table because I had met with three levels of police and said, I'm worried about his safety. I'm worried about a lot of safety issues. And in the military, I'm trained in terrorism. So I outlined my courtroom and said, here's how it's going to be. I need plain clothesmen. I need three levels of security. And if something happens, I need him rushed out the back door through the jury door. That's why I had him there. Not for a media circus, as he called it, but for safety. And, um, People can say what they want. I don't regret anything. Um, he is dangerous. He still, even though I asked him several times, does he want to withdraw his plea? And he said no. He still calls it medical. And that worries me. I hope he is getting treatment and rehabilitation in prison. But do I think he should be free? No. In the letter that he wrote me, he said it was not, it was not criminal. It was medical. His treatments of these sister survivors, he still, although he said it was sexual when he pled, he still claims it was medical treatment um, when he wrote the letter to me and when he spoke to me. There's no acknowledgement that he actually abused anyone, and that's frightening to me. So he was still trying to claim that you were criminalizing medical practice. Yes, that he did nothing wrong, and it's all my mm -hmm. fault. I wanted a media circus. Well, I don't need a media circus. I've had lots of media cases. I didn't bring everybody there. He did. Was there a point in the proceedings where he came present and got real and stopped the flippant denial, avoidant behavior? The only human, deeply painful reaction that I saw, and I think the world saw, was when Trine Gonzer spoke to him. And she had known him since she was a very young child. And she had been to his wedding, and there were all sorts of family events. And she felt very close to him. And when she testified in tears, she basically said, my friend, what have you done? It was almost biblical. You could feel the pain in both of them. 